I told you earlier the way Walt works, he establishes the opening day on the day he tells you we're going to get started. This was one of my all-time favorite jobs because you, how many of you have seen the picture of the uh, monorail crossing? That, that little sketch took about 10 minutes to figure out what this train needs to look like. About 10 minutes on a sketch of, at my kitchen table. A couple of days later, I came into the, my office and drew the picture. Backing up just a little bit, Walt had been looking for a monorail since 1952, and he accidentally found a monorail in Germany. He and his wife were taking a vacation. He's on a road near Cologne, Germany, and just as he drives along in this little forest, a monorail goes right across the road right in front of him. Two seconds, one way or the other, Walt would never have seen that monorail. He backed up, went in, and talked to some Germans who didn't speak too much English, but he got just enough information about the company. Yeah, they make, they're making monorails. So immediately, within days, he sent uh, teams of um, executives from Disney to Cologne and negotiate a deal that uh, we're going to build monorails together. So with it, so Walt came back and he showed me pictures of this German train, which uh, some monorails, they look like a loaf of bread with a slot at the bottom sitting on a stick. They're not very elegant. And then Walt says, Bobby, I, uh, we're not going to use that German design. He says, I want you to get started on ours right away. And he walks out of the room. <laughs> Do you know how frightening that would be to <laughs> To a trained engineer, since I'm not, I had a pencil and a white piece of paper, and I could go in the direction I want. You have no idea what design freedom is unless you're in that kind of a situation. I was so excited, I just saw what that train needed to hide the slot in the bottom of a loaf of bread. That was the number one question right there. I read Buck Rogers, 1938-39, Dr. Zarko riding the rocket ship, had the little fins down the side when they land on the planet. Anybody old enough to remember Buck Rogers? No, you got to be 110, I think. <laughs> anyway, that was the clue. The shape of that pointy rocket with those little sled runners meant the monitor is a very tall machine. What if I curved it and then curved it out and made the fence the color of the beam as close as possible. Your eye would only see a, th a thinner type of color. But what if it's nice and pointy? You will not see the slot, but it's there. You will see the whole feeling of the shape of the front end of that thing. And the back end can be the same. With that in mind, I took all the dimensions we had of the size of the beam way that was going to be used figure out with a turn radius, which is only 118 feet, how the, how the basic shape and dimensions of that car will be. So I started making a couple of sketches. That after I made the sketches, after Walt came back and looked at the picture and tapped it, and he said, Bobby, can you build that? And I just said, yes. And he walked away again. <laughs> now, we're, now we are really stuck. But here's another thing. If you're not trained and you're a hot rider in Southern California, you're very aware of race cars, how they're built, what kind of shops build stuff. You're very aware of trucks and all kinds of rolling equipment. Number one, don't invent anything that's basic like an engineer where they're very proud. I didn't need to be proud. I needed to find a bunch of stuff I could buy right away and, and make it into a monorail. You need tires, okay, we can get wheels. Okay, I need an axle off of a truck. Oh, well, we have drag screws, so we use a big differential, we narrow it down, and we got to, oh, well, we just chop up a rear axle. Now I got a drive shaft, and the company's purchasing department said, oh, electrical, it's 600 volt stuff. There's, it's street cars of 1935. They're, they're in the junkyards, we can buy this stuff. We bought junk. <laughs> Trolley car parts <laughs> and, and eight, eight electric motors. We got them for like a hundred bucks a piece. 
and then you take all the function junk and figure out what you can combine or modify it, and then you build the basic structure and then bolt the store-bought or the junkyard stuff together. Really, that's the way you get stuff done fast. Never invent expensive stuff. Get something that already runs. Eight and one half months from the time Walt said, Bobby, get started, I gave he and his friend Richard Nixon, the vice president of the United States, his wife and their two girls, I gave them a ride. Eight and a half months. You can't get a budget for a job in eight and a half months out of a big company. <laughs> Seriously, that, I'm glad you asked me about that because that was an example of how people can fly at a very fast speed. I'll go a little further to explain it. The closest company that would build that train was a garbage truck company in East LA. Halfway through the time, they were too slow, and Disney took the job out of the garbage truck company, put it in a vacant movie studio building in Burbank, and we finished it there. And then shipped it to Disneyland and installed it. So there's different ways you have to do stuff. You want to be completely flexible about it. So that was one job that was a big business lesson for everyone involved in that whole job. And the training wasn't very good, but it, but it worked in enough years that we saw all the things that could be better. So then um, we made the Mark III monorail, which was there for a great number of years. And then from that, I made the Mark IV, which is for Walt Disney World. And then the Mark Disney's current train is a modified body of a Mark III from 68 with a brand new chassis that's, uh, that's heavier type of equipment, but with a real good looking cool body on it. It's always got a Mickey Mouse wrap or something on it. So that's a long-winded story, but thanks for that. That's, that's a favorite.